Hi, I'm Heidi, Heidi Larson Hurley, and welcome to another really fun, cool session of exploring and creating with Heidi. The goal here is for you to explore. The goal is for you to try out something you thought, never thought you could try before. And we're going to explore printing or printmaking. So who am I? I'm Heidi, Heidi Larson Hurley. I'm the former director of art for Braintree Public Schools. I'm an artist, I'm an illustrator. I come from a family. My dad was an art teacher. So I always explored, I always tried things and there wasn't that mistake. I don't know if you can understand that from home because some people really feel uncomfortable trying something because they think they're making a mistake. I like to call it an oops. So what's an oops? An oops is when you try something and it might not have turned out the way that you want to, put it aside, try again, try something new, go back to that oops, it might be something really cool. It really might be something really cool. With printmaking, there's really no mistakes with printmaking. Um, every mark that you make with printmaking or every print that you make, it might not come out the first time, but you can go back over it and you can re rework it and rework it. So there's a lot of history that's behind printmaking. And some of the things that happen is that printmaking goes, I guess the earliest forms of printmaking that they found was printing from wood blocks. So they'd take big chunks of wood and they would carve into the wood and create these absolutely beautiful scrolls and paintings. And this goes all the way back to China. And I think it was like 800 in the year 800, so that's a long, long time ago. How do they know that? Because they would make chops or blocks of wood, and then they, some of these are still around, which is kind of cool. Then there was something where um, letter forms would be printed and carved in, to, into scrolls, and at about 1400s, um, the Gutenberg press was invented, and that's really above and beyond what you want to know about printmaking, but if you think about it, newspaper press, pressing, with all those letter forms, each one of those words had to be placed in a particular way, and it had to be backwards, which is another fun thing, and then it was printed. So Gutenberg, and I believe, because I went there and I saw his statue, it was in Luxembourg in a big square, and there's a statue for Gutenberg, which is, I think, pretty kind of cool. Um, we also have done some great things that was called intaglio, etchings, all kinds of ways that um, I believe it was um, Rembrandt and Da Vinci, and they would create etchings, and, 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 and the, all that stuff. We're not going to do that, but I want you just to know about some of those things and maybe what the difference is. So there is something called relief printing. Relief is when you press something and pull it off and then you get a design or a pattern or some sort of really cool thing. The other thing is kind of like intaglio. Intaglio is when you carve into like say a plate and you carve into that plate with a knife or a real sharp um, tool and you put the ink on, wipe it off and then the ink stays in those holes and then you print it and what you get are the lines. In the opposite, what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a few things called collagraph. Collagraph is a type of print where you have a bunch of different materials and you create something really fun. We're also going to do some relief and some stamping. I got apples. <laughs> got some, you guys might have done this when you were little, but some leaves. These are really great ways to do some printing. If you have kids at home and you have got some apples that are starting to go by, it's really kind of cool because the design is beautiful. All right, so this is some of the things that we're going to be working with. Materials. So, so again, I said things that you find around your house. You don't have to have anything fancy. Um, not at all. You can use magic markers. I'm going to show you a way where you can take just water-based markers and you can put them on top of a certain foam plate and you can come up with some really fun designs. We're also using acrylic paint. Acrylic paint can be used. There's also block printing ink. Um, I don't use it very often. You know, I, I, I do when I, when I 
do prints, but I, I like acrylic. I, can, I have fun with that. Um, some of the other materials and things that we're going to be doing. I have um, uh, these plexiglass plates. This is a thin one. This is a thick one. They've been sanded with a light, fine um, sandpaper to give it a really not so slick surface. And I have these because I would do collagraph prints on these, really stiff if it would go through a printing press, or thinner if I want it to be a little bit more flexible. I also just have a plain one. I'm going to use this to put my ink or my paint on to roll it out. So that when you set yourself up, you want to have a kind of a clean area when you're working so that you have, I have a newsprint pad, but you can use old paper and stuff like that. In one side, I'm going to add um, ink in the other side I'm going to use do my presses I like to have nice clean prints so you'll see prints prints so you'll see what those are like this is a, um, a roller and this is a very small roller and it's not that great but let's see if it works out okay um, I couldn't find any of my better ones they come sometimes with rubber or glass but they're used to put the ink on and you roll it over a surface to make it nice and smooth you can also use a very thick paintbrush so um, thin I have a paintbrush a couple paintbrushes that I've been using I also have, which is really, really, really cool, I have cardboard. And why cardboard? Because you can print with cardboard and come up with some really cool things. Um, when you t take a look at cardboard, and I think I have a piece behind me here, we all get these boxes. So here's this really cool texture with these lines. And if I peel away the top layer, I can get some really fun patterns and designs with that. So I don't think I ever throw cardboard boxes away because I like to use them for printing or for cutting up or doing sculptures, but I just wanted to share that with you. We also need for tools, or you don't need, but you might want to have just a, um, a wooden spoon. A wooden spoon is used to burnish your papers and your work to flatten it out. And I have a rolling pin. I might not even use it this time, but if you have a rolling pin, that's another way of you making up your own type of a press. Um, I also have good old paper towel, no, toilet paper tube, and those are really a um, great way for printing. I have a sponge. I've got yarn. I have foam meat plates. These are great, and the kids at school, middle school, they actually get the foam plates and they create some really fun things with those. And just regular paper plates, okay? We're also going to try to explore, hopefully if we have enough time, stenciling, because stenciling is a form of printmaking as well. What I have here is a really old, <laughs> this is probably 30 years old, this is a linoleum plate. And this is from linoleum block printing. So where does this come from? So back in the day, the linoleum tiles that were in your house, the surface was kind of a, um, not rubber, but it had a, a, a certain type of surface on it. It was gray, and you could carve into it, and that's a form of printmaking. So I made this when I was in college. It was during a class, and it's a cow. It's been used multiple, multiple times for different types of prints. This in itself is a lovely little piece of art. But what I normally do is I hang on to these just to just kind of explore. But I did try to get into texture. What I also have here, this is rubber. This is a rubber. They sell these um, like at Dick Blick or some of the other art supply stores. And I happen to have this piece. There's a smooth surface. And then there's a kind of a standard surface, like a, it's got a little bit of a texture to it. You could use either side. But the way that this is different than this is this is so much easier to cut and to make marks with and to make lines with when, when you want to print. Um, I do not have the handles 
for the tools, but I do have some cutting tools in my hand. And they're different um, widths. And what an artist or a printmaker would do is would take, and it's like in a little handle that pushes, but you would push this into the rubber and it's like cutting into butter. It's absolutely awesome. And you can make your marks on here and pull it away for printmaking. I'll show you and demonstrate that a little bit later, but I just wanted to talk about this. Could you use other tools? I think you could. I know I could use an X-Acto knife and carve into it and do some other things, but I could use this without the little handle. It actually might even have more control if I'm cutting. So I'm gonna show you that process also a little bit later. What I wanna do is take and talk about something called collagraph. So you don't have to know that word, but what you do wanna do is know that this is a type of printmaking, all right? So collagraph is when you, it's like mixed media. And on this piece of cardboard, I took regular Elmer's glue and created this pattern. It's a heart and it's got a bunch of little dots on it. So I can use this multiple times and print lots of different copies from this. So what I wanna do is just demonstrate how I would use this material, how I would put the paint or the ink on the paper, how I would put the piece of paper on top and print that, okay? So this is what I'm gonna do first because this one, it's gonna be interesting. So before I start talking more about or demonstrating, a collagraph print, this is just on a piece of um, board. Um, it's matte board. I put it on there. The color of it doesn't mean anything. What I do want to do is get myself set up so that I have my materials. And then I'm going to place this flat on here. I am going to put some paint instead of ink. I'm going to put some paint on my plate because what I'm going to do is take my roller and roll this on top. What Anything that's raised on the surface will collect the ink. Some of it will fall below, but that's okay. That's what we want to do. So for paper, you can use any type of paper. I'm just going to grab a piece of construction paper here. So I have this orange piece of construction. Let's change the color because it's a heart. <laughs> because it's a heart, we gotta have a fun color. So I'm gonna take this pink and make sure it fits on here. And so what I'm gonna be doing is looking, and I could probably make a mark on here to find the center. So I'm gonna just, right on top of my plate, I'm just gonna put a dot so I can align my paper on top of that so that I know that that's gonna be my center point. I'm gonna take my ink and my roller, just gonna put a little bit here. It is acrylic, so what happens with acrylic? It dries permanently. I'm going to take this, and I'm, this is my roller. Now I can roll this back and forth. I want it to have a nice feel to it. And I used to always tell the kids at school, you wanna hear it. You wanna hear the All right, so I've got this rolling. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this right on top. I wanna get it right on top of the little points that I made. So I'm doing that. Get a little ink in the middle there. And I can see what it's starting to look like on here. I can pull it up. So wherever I have the paint or the ink, if I work fast enough, what's gonna happen is it's going to come up off the surface. This is a board, so it's not gonna be very flexible. So what I'm gonna do is take this, line up my lines. I'm just gonna smoothly press it down. Take my wooden spoon. And I'm just trying to get the top, maybe a little bit. And then I'm gonna peel that up. 
not put it back down again. I'm going to peel that up. And there's my print with my little heart. So this part that's in here, that tells me I might want to put more ink. I could actually take my paintbrush and go in there and control it just a little bit more. So this is a collagraph. So a collagraph again, I'm going to show you another technique with a collagraph. Let's put this guy here so you can see that. And we'll put this here. So when we're working with a collagraph, I'm going to take, here's my board that I have, and this is the one I'm going to work on top of. So a collagraph is a way of working so that I can remove, I can take things off, I can change things when I'm working. Sometimes if you lift the paper up and remove something. So I'm going to try to do that a little bit here. So what you're going to do is cover the surface of this entire board. Maybe I'll use the, the smaller one just so I can show you. So here's my smaller board. And again, I'm, I have a piece of paper that's here to protect the ink so it doesn't go off on the outside. But I'm just going to take this and I'm going to cover my whole plate. My burnisher is, I mean my um, brayer, this is a brayer, is not that great. But that's okay. Because what I'm going to do, these lines that I'm making with my brayer might really be kind of cool with this. And I'm going to use a leaf for my collagraph and some string. And what else do I want to put in there? All kinds of cool things. So again, here's my paint. I want to work fast because it's acrylic. Any reason it's not going on that spot, but that's okay. All right, so I have this. So I want some string. I'm going to take some cool string. Just kind of lay it across here. What, what is she doing? Magic! So then I've got a geranium leaf right here. And I'm going to put that geranium leaf here, right there. And I don't know what the name of this plant is, but I'm going to put, I'm going to peel that off. I'm going to stick that there. Maybe I'll put, here's a piece of ivy, and I'm going to stick that there. All right, it's on my surface. I'm going to take a real simple piece of paper here. This is a, just a piece of white bond, and I'm going to lay this over on top of this. And then I'm going to put another piece of paper right on top of it because I don't want to push through it. So I'm going to take this and this, and I'm going to press down. And I'm going to go over the whole thing. If I was really, like, fancy schmancy, I could um, buy a press if I wanted to. I can use my rolling pin. And the idea behind this is not to move. I can hear the leaves <laughs> crunching. <laughs> so I'm going to take this and I'm going to peek. I love doing this. It's all right. Come on. I'm going to peel this off. So this doesn't look like much of anything right now, but I'm going to turn these leaves over. So what I'm going to do is turn this leaf. And what it, the leaf does is it has the ink on it. And I'm going to turn that. And I'm going to turn that. And I'm going to turn, ooh, pretty. And then I'm going to put this back on top of it. Ooh, let's peel those strings off. I could use those strings in another spot if I wanted to. And then I'm going to put these leaves, print my leaves right back on top. So 
So the acrylic paint dries faster, so you kind of have to work a little bit faster. I'm finding that this isn't working for me as well, but that's okay. It's an oops, and I can go back into it a little bit. But wait till you see what we do next. So I'm just, this green piece of paper is just so I can get a nice surface on it. So then I'm going to peel this off, and hopefully my leaves are going to leave me a little bit of design. No, it's all right. Don't throw them away because you could always use them. This leaf, the only leaf that came out really good was this one. That's right there. But look at these cool designs. Very abstract. I can go back into this if I want to. I might even just put some more ink on my leaves to get the cool texture and try to do that. So that's what I think I'm going to try to do next. So we've got two messes, which is OK, because what I'm going to do, see, look at, isn't this beautiful? I hate to say, <laughs> look at, if I put this behind here, that bottom leaf right there is absolutely gorgeous. If I wet a piece of paper, so let's get a piece of white. I wish I brought a spray bottle, didn't even think of it. But if I wet this paper, let's see what happens if the acrylic works on this or not. I'm going to just burnish this. I just want that one leaf in the corner, so I'm just going to wet that one side. I'm going to put this down right on top. This is experimenting, exploring and creating. I hope this comes out. If it doesn't come out, it's okay. Again, I'm using this. So I've done lots of, um, of my Christmas cards. When I make Christmas cards, I might print makes it a lot easier. Or I'll do one really good print, photograph it, and then, eh, didn't come out. I think the acrylic isn't in our favor today, but I'm still exploring. The other thing I can do is carve into this. So if I use the back of this paintbrush, I can go in there and start making some lines and a few other things. Again, it's acrylic. Mm, was it the best choice, Heidi? Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. <laughs> I want that one leaf right there. Put it up to the light. That's gorgeous. So, all right. That was okay. Let's go to the best, most fun, fun thing that I'm going to be working with. So this is the cardboard that I was telling you about. Just a piece of cardboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors, and I already cut into this. And what I'm going to do is just peel away that top layer of paper. Do you see what I just did? So I'm going to go into this. I know that I um, created a leaf over here. And one of the things that you might want to think about, you might want to save this. I had some students create profiles, faces of people, using this um, technique. And boy, were they beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Nora Burns, wherever you are, I've always remembered your beautiful piece. So you can see by creating these lines or creating textures, this is kind of a throwaway unless, unless you, um, um, I was just thinking about this, you can throw it away, but you can cover it with an acrylic polymer or spray it with a wash so that you can wash this out a couple times. This is actually an okay material. Have I done it? Um, I tried to, and I never went back to the piece ever, you know, I didn't go back to it. So I just cut into the surface. I don't cut all the way through, and then I just peel. So I've created this, these leaf shapes. I'm into leaves, I guess. So again, how would I apply this? I'm going to take and I'm going to put the acrylic down. And again, I want to prepare myself here because I'm going to put the ink down on top of this surface. I need my piece of paper that I'm going to pick up from this. I might need two or three sheets of paper because I can run two or three prints. 
I'm going to take this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the, the ink all the way to the edge of my board. So I'm going to take this, put this underneath so I don't get the surface all gunky, because I can remove it. And again, I'm putting the ink right on top of this. And you can see the, the image coming through. I've seen some terrific buildings that have been done. All right, good ink, it's nice, hear that sound. And there's some cut marks that are already on this. And the, the good thing about the acrylic with this is that it will dry and then you can just keep working back on top of it. I am going to remove this piece of paper because I want a nice clean surface. I'm centered. I'm going to lay my piece of paper right on top. Sometimes if you put it down like this, you'll get a better. And then I'm going to take and burnish. Go right to the edges. All right. And then I'm going to peel it up. Oh, pretty. That's beautiful. Isn't that nice? It's really pretty. So again, I'm using something I found around the house. I can let this dry, or I can go back into it, and I can cut, cut some more. I can add some lines, add some collagraphs to it, do all kinds of fun things. So again, that's another process. So, we have covered the cardboard. We have covered a collagraph. So what I want to do is just really briefly show you about stamping a little bit, so maybe you might want to try doing that. So stamping in itself is a blast, right? So if I were to take a look at, say, this apple, it's got a great surface to it. I've got a seed. My favorite memory is at Girl Scout camp. We did this, and I did it on tissue paper. And when we did it on the tissue paper, it was supposed to be for wrapping paper for our families. <laughs> and I never wanted to wrap it because I thought it looked so pretty. I think I did sailboats and I did, I just loved it. All right, so I've put the ink on here and I'm just gonna press down really hard. And I'm gonna lift straight up. Okay, not bad. You can do some more. And why am I using black? Black works better on the camera, I think but if I have some other colors that I might want to try. And when I use the markers, that's another thing that I might want to try to do. Have anybody ever seen the printing with the fish? There's some really, I don't know the name of the, the process, but you take a fish and you ink the fish and then you put it on this paper and then you have an imprint of, the, maybe I should have brought fish <laughs> today. Um, but that's another process. I'm, oh, this is awesome. Let's do the cauliflower. So here I again, I've got my ink. If I need to add more ink, I can add more ink. Here's my broccoli. I'm gonna just smush it right in there. Forget that stuff. Oh, see, exploring and creating. Here's this, oh my gosh. I'm pressing and I'm going to lift straight up. Yeah, we got apples and we get broccoli. This is great. What's great now is I could take my camera, take a photo of this and edit these prints. Wouldn't that be a blast? Okay, here we go. Lift that up. I call this apple broccoli prints. So let's put a little bit more in here. And if you notice, I'm getting it on my hands and it's freaking me out. 
I don't like to have a messy process. I'm, I'm that person that I need to have a nice clean space or it starts to go ballistic. It's all right, I'll be all right. I think what I just learned, what I really love is, I'm gonna just smush this apple in there, get all that ink. So how cool would it be if I had two different colored colors and did a multi, <laughs> this didn't come out at all. <laughs> Now we're gonna go back to this. And I can use my paintbrush if I need to, if I really wanna place my ink in particular spots. Oh, this has got a real pretty star in the middle of it. Let's hope that that comes out. So when you have a, um, a surface that's bouncy or flexible, what it does is it raises up and it gets underneath your object, which is really nice. Nope, didn't get the middle, so maybe I need to press down a little bit more. Another secret might be, I might want to put my paper, this is a, just a towel, if I put my towel down, like so, that also gives it more, you know, bunch, bunching. So when I pr push this in here, it's gonna raise up and get the underbelly of this really cool apple. I guess you could also cut the apple perfectly straight. That's another option. So here we go. I'm gonna press down. And I'm pressing down, not too much to wrinkle the paper, hoping that the surface is underneath is raising up to meet the bottom of my apple. Eh, it's a little bit better, but how neat is that? We should have brought the fish. That's what I should have brought was the fish. Okay, so we have stamping and printing, which is really fun. So I'm gonna go and change the subject a little bit, move all these guys. How much can we do in one time? So this is another fun way of printing. So if I'm sure a lot of you all have these plates, this styrofoam plates, or a regular plate, or a different type of plate. I find that styrofoam is one of those things that st that's starting to uh, not be around as much anymore. But if I have a styrofoam plate, what I can do is I can push into the surface of this to create, um, to create a printing so I can go into that. So what I'm gonna do is cut it so that it's flat. So I'm gonna take, the, I'm gonna use the back of this, use my X-Acto knife, and I'm gonna cut a square plate. So I'm just gonna go in here. So I could cut these into shapes. I could do all kinds of really neat things with this. Here's my plate so that I have that. And what I could do, since I'm on the theme of um, on, I'm on the theme of leaves, what I want to do is take the back of a pen or a back of a pencil. I'm going to take the back of this paintbrush, and I'm going to press into this side has ooh, you could do something with that too. But on this side, what I'm going to do is just press into the foam. So I'm just going to press hard enough. You can see it, I'm not pressing too hard. I just wanna get an indentation. And here's my leaf that I've just created. You can't see it because it's white. But what I'm gonna do now, which is really kind of fun, is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna just use a standard magic marker. So with the standard magic marker, what I'm going to do is color this, use a piece of regular bond paper, and I'm also gonna take this regular bond paper and I'm gonna make it a little bit wet when I adhere the marker. So I just have standard regular markers. I'm going to take this and I'm gonna color right on top of the foam, go all the way across. I could color the whole 
foam, oh, you know, I'll do it afterwards. I'll show you what you can do with the relief. So here's yellow water-based marker on top of this. I'm going to add a little bit of, say, red just in this, this part here. And maybe add a little green. Let me draw a stem. So now that I have this on here, I need to activate it to get it, you know, so that it works. I'm just going to take my brush, add some water, and let it soak into the paper. You can pre-do your paper beforehand so that you, it's not completely soaking wet, but you can have it so that it, they're ready. Here's my wet paper. And for this process, I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to take the plate, make sure I've got my wet side. Again, I want to find the center. I'm going to curve this a little bit, press it down, and then very lightly I'm going to press. And if I, again, take another sheet of paper, put it on top, just so that it doesn't get too kooky. All right, here we go. I'm going to lift this up. Oh, very nice. I can make lots of these. You know, this is one. But what I'm going to do is enhance this. So now I'm going to go into the outside area. And I'm going to paint, color this in maybe just blue on this part. And you can, you know, dots, polka dots, lines. And then, to make it even more interesting, what if I took my brush from before, and I'm going to add some dots, or did that beforehand. I'm just putting those dots in there. Or lines, zigzags. So I have dots on my surface, and now I want to align this back up again with this. So I can see that I've got my corners, flip this, my paper is, ooh, no, I'm not done. Put some lines on here, yeah, baby. All right, now we're ready to go. So I have this, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up, try to get it, flip it, press it, put my piece of paper on top, I can use a burnisher, not too hard. And you can keep doing this multiple, multiple times. If you start with a light color and go forward, this is reduction prints, or it's the way that you would create multiple prints on one page. So here, <laughs> look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Much better than the first one, right? <laughs> so this is great. Again, this is another process. You can do this at home. You don't have to buy special materials. You all have markers at home. You've all got foam plates that you can recycle and use for art materials, and you can create some really fun, 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 fun things with that. All righty. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take and introduce a product I've never used. How's that? Sound like fun? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, all right, this jelly print. It's a jelly thing. And what this is, it's another way of applying the ink onto a surface and coming up with really cool textures and stuff and then making your own stamp or printing. So we don't have a lot of time, but what I'm going to do is very quickly go through this and kind of show you some of the fun process with this, okay? So the jelly print has this piece of plastic, and what it can do is it can stick to a surface so that you can make a stamp. So I'm sticking this to this here, pulling this off, 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use the ink that I had from before the acrylic. Just put it on top of this. Okay. So then you take a fork, you take a knife, you take a spoon, and you kind of create a cool pattern. You can see that I've done that. They come with like, you know, pieces of foil and different things that you can go about. This is a kit, but hey, do whatever you want to do. You don't need the whole fancy kit. So I've just made this really cool design. And I'm just going to print this. Wait till you see this. Onto the paper. <laughs> Oops, there you go. Isn't that nice? So again, we've got this really cool thing. I can go back into it, add more ink, add, make, change the design, go back into it. So I've been having a lot of fun exploring and creating with uh, printmaking. I didn't go over stenciling, but you know what? That's something that can happen at another time. I've got all kinds of fun things for you to explore and try. Oh, I forgot about my paper towel tube. If I print circles, I am so excited. Got a cup. Again, get that ink on there. Oh, are we having fun yet? I'm having a blast. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children at home, I hope you had a great time with this. I know I did. I know I had some oops, but you know what? That's how you explore. You just take things, you put ink on it, and you print it. How much fun is that? That's how you get started. So I really want you to explore. I want to thank BCAM. Thank you. If you love this or if you want to have a, or maybe you might have a suggestion. It's like, Heidi, I've got all this wallpaper downstairs. What do I do with it? Maybe we could try something out new and different. So what I'd like you to do is to make sure you give this a huge thumbs up, you know, down below on the YouTube thing. Contact BCAM. I want you to get out there, explore, create, have a blast. I know I am, because that's the whole point, right? Have a good time, explore, and have fun cleaning up. That's the best part, right? No. Oh, anyway. Well, thanks a lot. This is Heidi. Heidi Larson Hurley saying see you later. Bye-bye.